Hi everyone and welcome to DEFCON CZ 2022. I would like to welcome here our next speaker, Dan Cermak. Welcome Dan. If you have any questions for Dan during his talk, please use the Q&A section in Hopin. We'll get to the questions at the end of the talk. Thanks for the introduction. Hi everyone, welcome to DEFCONF. Thanks for joining my talk about OpenQA, about testing Linux distributions and appliances. Great that you made it. Um, first, let's talk a bit about me. So I'm Dan Cermak. I'm a software developer working at SUSE. I joined as part of the developer engagement program, working on development tools, and currently I'm building containers. If you are also familiar in the open uh, in the Fedora community, I'm a member of the i3 SIG. Uh, where we ship the i3 spin. I'm a package maintainer and I used to be the I used to be in Fesco for the Fedora 34 cycle. So if you say the magic words in uh, in Matrix, then I shall emerge as Devolos there and disappear into the void back again. Anyway, a few of my big hobbies are development tools and testing. That's also why I'm presenting to you OpenQA and also writing documentation, which I actually quite enjoy doing. If you would prefer to also stalk me on social media, there are a few links in the uh, on the presentation slides, which I'll share at the end of the presentation. So uh, since we have only 20 minutes, let's dive right into what are we going to talk about. First, um, I'll give you a very short overview of what is actually this OpenQA thing that you might not have heard about yet. Um, I'll give you a brief sales pitch, and then we'll take a look at how it is used to test the Linux distributions, appliance builders, hardware, etc. PP. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So with that, what is this OpenQA thing, you might ask yourself. So in case you have never heard of it, I'm going to give you the perfect explanation. It's a web application. Now I've helped you a lot. No. Okay. So what is actually OpenQA? OpenQA is actually a test framework for systems under test. So, and um, I think I need to elaborate this a little bit because usually if, you, usually if you think about testing, you're usually thinking about testing individual, um, individual components. So for instance, you're te you're, uh, you want to test a program uh, and uh, so you're testing this program or a certain component of a program. And OpenQA is a, it's a test framework that's really designed to test a whole system. And by a whole system, I mean something like a, a, a PC, like a real PC, or if it would, if it would be very easily doable, a cell phone uh, operating system, something like that. So you give it really a, a real thing. And uh, it tests that this whole system is uh, working as expected. Uh, so what OpenQA does, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's designed for user-oriented testing. So what it can do really well is simulate user input. So stuff like wiggling a mouse, pressing, okay, I can't lift up my keyboard, sorry, uh, pressing keys, um, looking, at a video output. So what OpenQA also can do is it can record the video output that comes out of your uh, out of your system under test, and then it uses OpenCV to match the output uh, against expected parts. So essentially, what you would uh, it, it does essentially what would a tester do? So you tell a te you tell your uh, QA person, okay, you go to the installer, you look for this icon, then you click it, then there should be a drop down, this should appear, and so on. And your QA person um, would then um, uh, would then check, okay, there's this icon, I click it, I press these keys, and so on. And this whole thing is really operating system agnostic. So it. It's usually used to test Linux, but it also works on Windows. You could even run it on really stripped down operating systems. So it can do all kinds of things. Uh, so why should you do this? So let me put on my um, let me put on my salesperson hat that I forgot at home. Sorry. So uh, without the salesperson hat, why should you use this? Um, you want to do system level testing, i.e. you have, for instance, a Linux distribution, you have an installer, and you want to, um, you want to verify that the installer works every single time. Um, 
doing this every single time is probably a very boring job and your QA person will murder you in about two weeks. So you can use OpenQA to automate this. Um, when should you use it? You can, if you are really care about user-centric testing. So um, if you have a GUI application uh, or if you want to test on your, uh, on your system and test something that has a GUI, then uh, OpenQA can really help you out because it really moves a mouse and clicks things. So, uh, so even if you, for, for instance, if your installer somehow creates an overlay due to some weird bug and you can't click it anymore, OpenQA will catch this. Um, also another thing, OpenQA, while it by default runs in virtual machines and tests virtual machines, um, it can run on bare metal and it can test real bare metal machines. I'll show you, um, I'll show you an example later on uh, that this is done for Raspberry Pi. Um, what it can also do is uh, you can, if you write individual tests, you can label these. You can attach bug reports to test results. You can review full test suit runs. So imagine you create, uh, if you know how OpenSUSE works, then uh, every new tumbleweed snapshot gets uh, gets an OpenQA run. After each OpenQA run, uh, the release manager reviews it and says, okay, go, no go. Same thing happens on Fedora with every compose of Fedora Rawhide. Um, and last but not least, this is really battle-tested tech. So we are not talking about some fancy new thing that I hacked up together in my in my basement. This thing has been running for ten years uh, at uh, at OpenSUSE, at SUSE internally, and Fedora. I've heard that it's been run on uh, in Red Hat as well, but uh, I have no confirmation about that. So t treat this as hearsay. So this is really battle-tested tech, and it works really, really well. Um, let's talk a little bit about the architecture of OpenQA. So OpenQA itself is um, uh, is the primarily a web page and a web API that you can see in the uh, uh, on the left upper part of the of the picture. That's what you would interact as a uh, that's what you would see as a user and as a um, and as a test writer, that's also what serves, uh, what schedules tests, what stores the test database, etc. PP. Um, then the actual, so this thing has a REST API, it has a web UI. The tests are then dispatched to individual workers. So these are uh, these are jobs. These can be these can run on the same machine. These can run on different machines. Um, they can be close by, they can be somewhere totally different. You just then have to invest a little bit more work into the infrastructure. Um, the actual testing is then done by a job called OS Auto Inst. This is a, uh, this is a small binary which needs, uh, which usually connects via a serial line, uh, to a, to a system under test. And then what it uh, what it uh, it connects to the system under test. This can be this is by default a QEMU uh, virtual machine. Um, it can be bare metal. It can be also uh, all kinds of other backends. And then if you want, you can make OpenQA uh, simulate key presses, uh, mouse movements, and you can match uh, use the video feed. But you don't have to. So you can run pure console tests, and you don't have to do any kinds of um, uh, any kinds of video matching. But it's usually uh, that's the thing where OpenQA really shines. Um, so here is a small screenshot of the web UI. So what you would uh, see if you click on an individual test. So what you see here are, uh, this is the installation test suit from OpenSUSE Tumbleweed that I think I took the screenshot maybe a year ago. So you see here individual, individual tests and every single screenshot here is when OpenQA was specifically looking for something. Um, so this now feels probably all very, very op opaque and abstract and okay. So how does this look in practice? And the cool thing is since OpenQA does, uh, uh, does actually user interaction, uh, what you are currently seeing here is a small, uh, is a short video, uh, what uh, OpenQA actually does during the installation of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So I hope this, uh, this works since I have hop and open and that looks like it's not really playing. Um, in, 
case it's not playing i'm sorry about that but what you would essentially see here is uh, a very fast installation process of OpenSUSE tumbleweed and that's what OpenQA does for the OpenSUSE distribution every single on every single snapshot it just runs the whole installer so we can really be certain the installer still works it creates uh, it creates useful images uh, the image recognition part itself is um, it works via so-called needles. So this is a feature of OpenQA. You don't have to use it mandatorily, but uh, to not go into too much technical details. But what it does is what you see here, these small green uh, green rectangles, these are image areas that OpenQA really looks for. So it doesn't compare the whole screen. It just compares parts of the screen that you tell it uh, what it should look for. And that's really like what a QA person would do themselves. So if you tell the QA person in a a screenshot of this is uh, this is anaconda from rawhide uh, and you tell it click on the keyboard icon then they they don't really care that there's also a language support below that they just need to find out okay there's a keyboard icon i want to click that so that's also kind of the reasoning and matching whole screens would be just totally broken um features that I didn't mention yet uh, so what openk can also do is uh, it can produce test artifacts um Simplest example, you run an installer, it creates a virtual disk image, OpenQA saves this disk image and can boot from it, which is perfect because it means you can check that your installer actually works without burn, without writing it on a physical disk. Um, it can handle these assets so they won't clog up your, uh, your hard drive or your hard drive on OpenQA. Um, you, can, uh, you can have tests depend on each other so Essentially, you have one uh, you have one test um, that creates a virtual disk image, and other tests are scheduled afterwards, which use this uh, which use this um, disk image. Um, okay, I mentioned this one previously, and that was you can uh, you can tag and review, you can restart jobs, you can group jobs, you can group tests, and there's a plethora of backends. So the default one is QEMU. Uh, and libvirt, but you can also run it on true bare metal. You can use IPMI, and there's also this uh, X3270. So that's for S390X if you want to test one of these, uh, if you want to test on IBM's um, architecture. So, first part done. Second part OpenQA in the wild. So, where is it used? Um, I'll showcase you a few very prominent users starting out with the thing where it started and that's OpenSUSE. Please don't get shocked. This is a figure of the whole OpenSUSE release process or a little bit of a simplified version. And uh, since this contains a whole ton of information, we actually only care about this part. So, um, open, and we'll f focus here specifically on the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed distribution, uh, which is the rolling release one. So the development of the distribution happens in so-called development projects, where you submit your packages, uh, then they get into staging projects and uh, trickle down into OpenSUSE fac uh, into factory, which from which then we take snapshots and create op uh, the actual OpenSUSE tumbleweed release, usually every few days or every single day, depends. Um, so, and for the staging projects, uh, there's, a, there's a bot. So a staging project is essentially you su submit a few changes there. Um, then all the packages in the staging project get rebuilt. Uh, disk artifacts get built and then OpenQA runs on those. Um, and that essentially verifies that every, uh, that the submission did not break the essentials of the distribution. And in practice, uh, it looks like this. So you have a bot on uh, the open build service. This is a screenshot from the open build service. Uh, and the bot tells you which, um, which OpenQA tests succeeded and which other tests failed. Um, essentially, the same thing as I described happens sort of also with, um, with OpenSUSE Leap, where it's, uh, which is the stable, uh, which is this stable enterprise variant of, uh, of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, only that it's done with maintenance updates, but it's kind of the same. Um, Fedora. So you folks here might be more familiar with that one. So Fedora, 
um, what you can, uh, how the Fedora development workflow is. So we have our package sources in uh, on in this Git. There they get built in uh, in Koji. Um, Nowadays, everything goes through Bodhi, so Fedora update system, that's Bodhi, uh, that creates updates for the stable branches and for Rawhide. Uh, and now the process splits up. So for Rawhide, uh, you get every, uh, you get, I think every night you get a, you, you get Punji to create, uh, to create a new compose and provide that this compose succeeds. Um, the resulting images get taken and pushed into OpenQA where all kinds of tests are being run on it. Um, that's usual, and then you get, uh, then you, and if you're so, and if you're subscribed to the development mailing list, uh, then you'll get, uh, then you'll see one of those emails that get sent out from OpenQA. Now, uh, then there's also for branch and stable releases. So currently Fedora 35 and 34, um, OpenQA does not run on every update, but for critical path updates. So think of uh, something like the kernel. And there's also a few other crit uh, critical path packages. Their Bodhi's uh, uh, test repositories are used. Uh, so OpenQA then takes the Fedora, uh, the uh, the Fedora stable base image. It installs the updates and then runs OpenQA. And you can see the results of that actually in Bodhi. So this is a screenshot from Bodhi for a recent update about uh, of the kernel. And uh, the the green parts, these are actual OpenQA tests. So uh, and, and so they essentially verify that the kernel works in the expected cases. Okay, next one. This is kind of unusual one, and that's about the Kiwi image builder. So since I guess many of you are not familiar with Kiwi, Kiwi is an image builder. It's kind of comparable to OS build. Kind of does a comparable job to Punji. Uh, it's the default image builder in the open build service. It's used to create all most of the images of the open source distributions. Um, it's uh, and I've been involved with it a little bit. Um, it's a pretty nifty project. And since I see Neil in the chat, he's also involved, but he's involved in everything, so he doesn't count. Sorry about that, Neil. Um, anyway, so um, the, uh, the Kiwi release process uh, used to work essentially like this. Uh, stuff was developed in Git, and then we tag a release, uh, run a few test images, and decide, OK, is this good to go? Um, yeah, that's not not super uh, super ideal so very quickly there was a staging project design so essentially on every tag you push this uh, this version of um uh, you you push this version of the uh, of kiwi into a staging project and you create all tons of test images so uh, live disk images installation isos and full disk images and the open build service would then every time rebuild them and you get a bunch of test images and then you find out okay do my images build but that doesn't tell you do they actually work and uh, currently the staging project contains i think something like 50 60 images and just booting all of them and just verifying that they boot is you you can spend all week with that so that's that's really a job for automation and uh, the past yeah more or less the last year we spent on adding open qa for this so what open qa nowadays does it's not fully automated yet unfortunately but we're working on that and the idea is it open qa then takes all these produced test artifacts and when we say we want to make a new release we take all those test artifacts we shove them into open qa open qa boots all the live installation media verifies do are they booting the installation images they are uh, started they install a disk uh, and then we boot the disk again uh, and verify whether the work, uh, whether the disk that's been uh, that's been uh, created really works. And it's caught already quite a few bugs. Um, so I mentioned previously, bare metal testing works with the Raspberry Pi. Um, sorry, I'm breezing through that right now because I'm running out of time because I'm terrible at time management. So um, this is great work that's been done by Guillaume Gardet from ARM. And uh, so this is really testing 
um, testing of a real Raspberry Pi. This is uh, this has been running for over a year now on openqa.opensuse.org. And what this uh, this needs a few additional tricks. So it uses an, a nice piece of hardware called the USB SD Max, which is a USB multi, uh, which is an SD card multiplexer. So it allows you to have an SD card plugged into two devices at the same time and switch between them. So what is this? You have your open QA worker. It flashes a new disk image onto the SD card of the Raspberry Pi. They are connected by a, by a serial line and they communicate via the network. Then you have an option how to power the Pi on and off. Uh, and so you essentially you turn the Pi off, uh, you flash a new image. Um, you power, you switch the multiplexer, you boot up the device, you run all your tests, and if they work, you're happy. If they don't, uh, and something really breaks, you just unpower the Pi, and everything's uh, fine again. Cool. So, and uh, people have now started working, uh, starting putting this, uh, taking this a step further, and introducing, oh, sorry. Um, this is how it looks in practice, or how it looked in practice um, about a year ago in Guillaume's uh, test setup. So, um, what I was saying, Cubes OS, they are taking this a step further, and that's uh, running true bare metal tests. So, this is all very much work in progress. Um, what they're essentially doing is testing the uh, testing Cubes OS on real laptops. If you are curious about that, you can go to the slides, uh, and this is actually a uh, this is a link to a, a pull to a blog post pull request by Marek, who's uh, who's driving this initiative. Uh, it's quite a, quite an interesting read if you want to find out all kinds of technical details, how you can, uh, which kind of difficulties you run on if you try to uh, to really not uh, if you try to not only um, test connections via VNC but really grab the screen output if you want to boot from physical hardware and so on. Uh, and one of the issues that you run with laptops if uh, is you need to remotely kill them. And uh, so just the tiniest sneak peek about this, this is how Cubes OS does it. So this is a servo and um, it essentially presses the power button. Okay, since I'm getting uh, running out of time, if you want to get in touch, you can find, uh, you can find us on IRC, on Matrix. Here are a few links. You can find them in the slides. And with that, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. We'll go straight away to the questions. The first one is by David. Is OpenQA looking at how to use public cloud instances for remote testing? I am thinking of something related to the IPA tools. I think IPA has a new name. Uh, so I think there has been there have been ideas to do that to use public uh, public cloud images, um, but it's unfor it's not super trivial. So there has been the idea floating around that uh, that uh, sin if you have a semi active open QA instance where you just need at burst times a lot of workers you could spin them up on AWS or Linode or where wherever you have uh, you have your public cloud hat um, but I'm but I think it's been at ideas only at the moment because it's actually not uh, super trivial to pull off as open QA is uh, uh, it, it usually wants to have a serial connection somewhere and integration with these public cloud tools is not super trivial in a open QA context. It's definitely doable. Uh, so I have myself added a very rough around the edges, uh, backend for open QA that talks to Vagrant. Um, so it's possible, but it's going to be, uh, it's not there yet. If that answers your question. Thank you. And there's a second question by Jan. If the test is really a kind of state of the world of the whole system, how is that what I would want as an app developer? While for the system snapshot testing, installer or whatnot, sounds great. For a single app, it sounds like the functionality might be a little out of my scope of interest. Um, that is correct. 
so if you for a single application it's not always perfect uh, because you get all your mm, you get all the other state but uh, so for instance openqa is as far as i know it's uh, it's started to being used for uh, the GNOME development. Um, so what you could do as an app developer is if you really want to run user-centric tests, then you would create some, some kind of um, known good base image. So you take your stable Debian, stable CentOS, stable Fedora, OpenSUSE Leap, whatever, you consider yourself stable, and um, you use this baseline image. And in and in OpenQA, you would have an initial test that, uh, inst that shoves your application into this and then runs your tests. But... Um, you'd really have to have to consider whether you really want to do that what if it's worth the effort since uh, open qa is uh, it's a non setting it up is a non trivial task i don't want to uh, i don't want to downplay that so it's really not super simple to pull off uh, it's doable but it's not super simple thank you very much for your answers uh, sadly we're out of time so there are a few more and there's not time for them but then should be available at our work adventure uh, after the presentation so if you want to ask him any questions you can do it there uh, we'll post the link to the work adventure in the chat so i believe uh, everyone who wants to ask you something they can find you there yeah sure so thanks everyone thank you once again for your interesting presentation Thanks for having me. See ya.